Hi, my name is Kirsten Hall. I'm a graduate student at Johns Hopkins University in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And I'm going to talk about a paper that I recently submitted for publication uh, along with my thesis advisor, Nadia Zakamska, as well as another professor here at Johns Hopkins, Tobias Marriage, and two of our other collaborators. The paper is titled, Downsizing of Star Formation Measured from the Clustered Infrared Background Correlated with Quasars. A little background for this work starts with the fact that the goal is to investigate the redshift evolution of the physical properties of dusty star-forming galaxies. These galaxies are objects in the universe that are highly star-forming and extremely dusty, which means we can study them at infrared wavelengths. This Hubble image shown here is an example of a dusty star-forming galaxy. The a particular property of interest for us is the dark matter halo mass of these objects. Within lambda CDM, which is a cosmological structure for the universe, dark matter physics is considered to be known, and therefore the evolution of large-scale structure of the universe is also known for dark matter. We know that in this theory, dark matter collapses into spherical halos inside of which galaxies form. We also know that the dark matter halo mass correlates with other physical properties of the galaxies, such as their stellar mass or their stellar growth rate. So again, the dark matter physics is known, the correlation with physical properties is known, but one question that we still haven't really figured out the answer to is how exactly do galaxies populate dark matter halos? That is, a particular type of galaxy may inhabit dark matter halos of particular masses as a function of cosmic time. And that is the question that we're aiming to answer in this research. That is, we're trying to link the bulk of star formation in the universe to the dark matter halo masses of the host galaxies by using a tracer population of objects called quasars. The only thing we need to know about quasars for this study is that they're very bright and that we have a very large statistical sample out to high redshift from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. That means we know the redshifts of quasars very well, and we can use them to probe the environments around the quasars. And in this case, we are interested in the dusty star-forming galaxies that are correlated with the quasars. The theoretical picture of what we're looking at are quasars that live in dark matter halos along with dusty galaxies and neighboring dark matter halos that also potentially have dusty galaxies and or quasars inside of them. The infrared data that we're using for this study is from the Herschel Space Telescope using the instrument called SPIRE. This survey is particularly useful because it overlaps well with the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, and therefore we can maximize the number of quasars in the sample for probing the dusty galaxies. So in this slide here, I am showing the Herschel Stripe 82, which overlaps with the SDSS Stripe 82, as well as the Hermes Large Mode Survey Field, which is a much larger area that also overlaps with Sloan Digital Sky Survey. And what we're looking at, again, is the clustering of dusty galaxies around quasars. And we're doing this using a method called stacking. We are stacking the Herschel maps on the locations of the quasars. And this is the equivalent of a cross-correlation of the Herschel maps with the quasar catalog. I'm showing an example of what the stacks look like at 250, 350, and 500 microns in the infrared data. We then use these stacked maps to generate angular cross-correlation functions by binning the maps radially into surface brightness. So here I'm showing the angular cross-correlation function in units of surface brightness of quasars and dusty star-forming galaxies making up the infrared emission in the Herschel maps. We model these angular cross-correlation functions in terms of the dark matter halo masses of the dusty galaxies living in the environments of quasars. And what we find for the most efficient halo mass at hosting dusty star forming galaxies as a function of redshift is shown in this plot. On the y-axis, we have M efficient, and on the x-axis, we have redshift. So this is showing the most efficient halo mass at hosting dusty star forming galaxies as a function of redshift. What we can see is that the distribution rises with redshift until around Z of 2.9.
This is indicating that the dark matter halo masses hosting dusty galaxies is increasing as a function of increasing redshift, or said conversely, at high redshift, dusty galaxies lived in much more massive dark matter halos than they do in the present day universe. This result is consistent with a concept known as cosmological downsizing, the idea that the mass of star-forming galaxies declines with decreasing redshift. And in this case, we're looking at the most intense star formation living in the most efficient halo masses declining with decreasing redshift. We can look at another physical property, however, to get a better idea of the bulk properties of the dusty star-forming galaxies. And that is by looking at the mean halo mass that hosts dusty star-forming galaxies. And what we find for the mean halo mass distribution with redshift is similar to the previous result in that it increases with redshift, but it increases up until a redshift of 1.5, after which it goes mostly flat. This is consistent with an idea known as archaeological downsizing, the idea that more massive halos host galaxies that assembled their stars earlier in time. This means that in the present day universe, the most massive halos were made from galaxies that formed their stars at higher redshift. So the most massive halos today evolved from galaxies, for example, at a redshift of two, when they had dusty star forming galaxies inside of halos of mass a few times 10 to the 12th, those evolved to be the most massive halos that we see today. Whereas a galaxy, a dusty star forming galaxy, at redshift 1.5 with the same halo mass will evolve to the present day to be less massive than that one at z of two. So this is the main finding of our work. I thank you so much for watching. This work has been submitted to the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society for peer review, and it has been published on the archive with the following reference. Thanks.